Yeah. Hey. Okay, we do Hello. Yeah. Welcome to Bodega Nights. Today we got me, Martin, Miko, Norm, hey. and Jao. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Right? So it's like from hey, 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 and hey, hey, hey. Right? So, so there's like a little bit of progression there, you know? Hey. So by next week, it's going to be ho, ho, ho. <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> Will, will, will. Look Damn, I, I can't do it. I can't do it in Gopal voice. Will, will, will. God, I <laughs> miss that guy. <laughs> Ew. Been, so for, been forever since I heard his name. Yeah. Anyone. Ah, uh, Gopal. <laughs> uh, last, last, oh man, sorry about that little bump. I like brought my chair down. Um, last week, we had uh, an episode of Bodega Nights that we didn't release because it wasn't... Um, Good. It was corrupted. Yeah, it was quite corrupted. It was corrupted. Uh, it's corrupted. Like, it, yeah. That. It's like an unreleased episode that will never come to the to to light or something like that. Yeah. Like Mainly due to corrupted files and stuff. It's really nothing else. It's just more of a technical issue. Yeah. 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 Let's not touch it. It's too young. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but there was a part what of that episode. Of, wait, what? There was a part of that episode that... Um, that was a pretty good conversation between um between Martin and uh, Miko about about the last, the last of, of us. us too. Yeah. So like so I this ain't the last of the topic. <laughs> right. Um so I I guess you guys can talk about it, but then um something that I thought would be interesting to talk about as well is sort of take a step back and um talk about whether or not companies should listen to the fans or whether ah, I right? that topic oh, yeah. right? or or okay. um whether or not companies should listen to the loudest fans. Oh, well, there's oh. actually a pretty for business things, there's a very easy answer to that one. <laughs> Which is what well, yeah, you, you listen, listen to your to, core you base your who's going to buy your product. If you're looking to make sales, if you're looking to make art yeah. pieces and commentary, there's no one stopping you. But don't be upset if it doesn't sell to a certain fan base. And there are yeah. there is an entire scene that does make very artistic, very nice, interesting games. Very uh, the indie scene is filled with it. Some are big hits, but majority of it ends up as quote unquote shovelware. Yeah, but when it comes to like triple A titles, you're kind of looking at well, you're here to make money for your investors. You're here to make money for the big time people in your business. They don't really care about anything beyond will this give us sales. Um, and if you do yeah. it that way, you listen to your consumer base. If not, yeah, Amen. make your art piece as you feel it should be. But don't demand people buy something just because you want that message sent across. That's not how it works. If you're making a product. And you want people to buy it, you pay attention, listen. Maybe you can do something different and people buy it. Yeah, I mean, Nintendo's done that a lot, but Nintendo has had many flops. Yeah. And the only reason Nintendo can do that is because they have the budget to experiment and see how that works. Like, uh, we remember how the Wii U kind of worked. No one Wii, reused it. Wii, 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 Wii. <laughs> but the thing oh, is, they had the money well. to spend to make that attempt. <laughs> Uh, and the other company was like this is going to be like the PS Vista which had some following but really was not a great system for the company at all the Sony can't one, afford right? to yeah Sony could afford to do it Nintendo they can afford to do so many mistakes because of how they handle the business they don't have loans they don't have debt they really make sure that they can operate I think for 4 or 5 years in the red as a minimum requirement whoa they have so a monopoly over Pokemon yeah, I mean, like yeah. Uh, well, that, that's a game freak thing, though. <laughs> but, but then, if if, if we put so, yeah. it in those terms, it's uh, it, it's an easy answer. But say yeah. um, when it comes to like when it comes to like an intellectual property that has a very fractured fan base, and um, where one side ah, of that fan lot. base is like, louder, right? That's quite Star interesting. Wars. Yeah, Star Wars. Um, oh, Star Wars. I I know a lot about that. <laughs> arguably, the DC universe, right? Like you know, there, there was DC. right. There was a time when we were all like, uh, when 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 everybody was all like, uh, Zack oh, Snyder should be fired, blah 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 blah. And then all of a sudden, we now have like Zack Snyder's release Justice League, the brief right? cut. So it's like I, I yep, mean, release the Snyder cut. Yeah, yep. you know. So there's there's a lot of that, and a lot of people um, on the internet are saying like, this is um, this is 
DC finally listening to their fans but then there was a point in time when the fans were saying no dude we want it to be more like like lighter we want it to be like Marvel uh, yeah and then and, and then they want to actually yeah. have fun <laughs> yeah that sort of thing so like you know listening to the fans might not be as cut and dry as oh, I, no, I no. think we would like it's it to be it's not cut and dry as you'd like no not all but if yeah. you just want a general nah. rule, yeah. If you're looking to sell products, I mean, let's look at the NBA games, FIFA games, <laughs> even the Central Call of Duty franchise. <laughs> they the know Call how to make franchise. their dollar dollar bills. The Call of yep. Duty franchise. Just go to NBA 2K, man. They're milking <laughs> money for VC. If, if, They're if, not like, stopping. If, it's getting worse. If, you think um, like we try to boycott it? No, there's still content creators coming on. Twenty. 2K21 is going to be a money-milking machine because they're doing a Mamba Forever edition because of the late Kobe Bryant. If, they already it's had a, if Call of Duty listened to their fans, ecosystem. we would still have LAN. Yeah. yeah. If, <coughs> yes. But they yep. didn't. I they am so upset how LAN is nothing. Yeah. I, right. But I have played a LAN game recently, which amazed me. Whoa. And it was the weirdest thing. I actually had to connect via IP address, which was so weird. <laughs> Okay, that's that's a first in a, in a in a few years, right? Yeah. Usually that's... we just connect to Asian server, American server, European server, server. European. Yep. Uh, but nope. But uh, yeah. connect via IP. Like, wow, I have not seen this since the nineties. Zero <laughs> yeah, Miko, let's uh, scroll back to what we were talking about last week uh, about the Last of Us. Like, you had a very good point about the sales and how record breaking it was, but you had. An insight on this. It's not because people bought it. It's because of something else. And what yeah, was that again? It's shipping numbers. Then when you ship these out to stores, they're generally considered sold because these stores will have it as part of their inventory. So if you're basing it off that, yeah, you sold X million copies because the stores have them. They are technically paid for. They are all sold to these stores who will then sell it out to their consumers. But I mean, especially I can actually say today, since it's been a week already... The sales have been technically plummeting because they've been reselling some of their old copies. I think Japan currently has over 3,000 copies popping up in their small uh, resell sites. I'm a bit pissed off about that, though. They're saying that it was a major sale. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's technically true, but that's the same thing they said for Battlefield Five, which was it had massive sales that realized those were shipping numbers. It's a great marketing twist to make yourself sound better than you are, but when it breaks it down... No, I mean, that's not the real sales numbers. That's great sales figures in your books, yes, but the reality, most people didn't buy it. Lots of times it's being given out for free with certain purchases. I actually remember Uh an anecdote from a Reddit post, which, of course, you know how credible that could be. (laughs) And it was amusing (laughs) where uh, supposedly a man had bought a PlayStation and it had come also with a free copy of Last for Us 2. It came with Last for Us 1 and they said, oh, you can also have the second one for free. Which the guy promptly said, wow. yeah, I'm fine. I, I don't want that. But it's free. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool, dude. It's okay. <laughs> that, now, the thing is, I can again. somewhat believe that. Because I remember <laughs> when people tried to give out Fallout 76, and it was not the same case. But in fairness to Fallout 76, they have improved. Not by much, but it's almost playable. So it's almost Fallout 69 or still 76? Hey, 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 uh, it's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, Nice. And I think the, I think the only game right now that, in fairness to the game, it's actually pretty fun to play now is No Man's Sky. It had an okay, absolutely awful release, but uh, currently it it's was actually... the false advertising of video games for the year. 20 oh yeah, plus plus. <laughs> that was it. Was it, um, it overpromised? <laughs> way, way, over. way over. It However, over-promised. today it has now was met it? those promises. Yeah. That's like five years nice. ago, I think. Huh. Oh, okay. So it's, it's become the... Greatest to them, they actually improved it. So I have to give so it like to a, the company. Yeah. That so they like actually worked on Front it. 2? Oh, no, no. Battlefront 2 is a whole different kind of fiasco. They just kind of... <laughs> it's still bad. <laughs> they didn't improve. I will agree to that. But, I mean, if you look at it, they've just jumped to the next game, which is uh, Rogue... Uh, was it Rogue Squadron or TIE vs. X-Wing? I kind of forget the name right now. It looks really good. It's pretty much you're playing as either TIE Fighter pilots or X-Wing pilots, and you're going to dogfights. It feels like a Rogue Squadron oh. game. It actually looks fantastic. It has VR support, non-VR support. Looks like a cool, fun game. The trailer looks good, but, I mean, until I see actual gameplay, it's hard for me to really throw my money at this. Uh, as much as I'm a Star Wars fan, 
I have not thrown my money at any recent Star Wars games. Whoa. Sounds like I, I can relate to that because I didn't get WWE 2K20. Even though I'm a WWE fan, I like just spent my money on Fire Pro because I tried 2K20 and goddamn the glitch. Like I was diving on the outside of the ring and there was a ladder there and my character got like skewered in between the ladder for a few seconds and I was my body was flopping until it like phased out of the ladder and I'm like on the ground for what the hell I don't know no in the Me line glitch. of like talking about the uh, bi- uh, franchises like re- releasing similar content throughout the years like FIFA just updating player rosters NBA with same thing rosters and yeah. graphical increases I have to give it to Bethesda who has released Skyrim I think seven to eight times we must the exact same game and we're still buying that I have eight copies I think of Skyrim <laughs> GTA 5 says hi when and people will buy him on PS5 <laughs> GTA 5 at least it had content increases yeah the only new Skyrim content I have seen is Skyrim VR which is utter utter garbage of a game unless you put mods to fix all the bugs and issues it has. But you have to pay for mods now, right? No, 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 no. Only if you go to a workshop, oh, no. there are still mods that are non-workshop. There are advantage of workshop mods versus non-workshop mods, but for the okay. VR game, it's all non-workshop because that doesn't have workshop support, if I remember correctly. But and yeah, it's a game that vanilla is... Hmm? That vanilla is? Uh, the vanilla setup for VR is... It's almost unplayable. You have so many game-breaking bugs. The game can literally just not work at the start. I wonder how Bethesda still works as a company. No one's really sure, but all we know is the community keeps it alive with mods. Because honestly, like, uh, my Skyrim looks like a modern AAA title with the sheer amount of mods I have it. I'm amazed how such a bad engine... Well, in fact, it's not that bad. It's at this point a really, really old engine. It's still somehow surviving. But damn, oh, the modern nice. community, they keep it alive. The same way Counter-Strike stayed alive because of mods. Which Man. is kind of funny to say because Counter-Strike itself is a mod. So many video games I haven't been able to play since. Why? So uh, you you have so much like uh, lack of free time during the entire pandemic lockdown? Yes, surprisingly. <laughs> really? Wow, okay, well, good for you, man. I just had free time. <laughs> It's kind of disappointing. I am the sick and tired. The hotel industry. <laughs> Freaking. Yeah, how's the hotel industry there? I got to ask you. Are you guys uh, the industry. accepting what are you check-ins? About? Uh, I mean, uh, you have... Yes, yes. Uh, technically, the, right now, the only check-ins you can have are people who are OFWs, quarantine people, and uh, frontliners. Technically, everyone okay. who's just affected by COVID. You're not allowed to have any leisure guests. Leisure guests can occur during MGCQ. <laughs> However, it's still dependent on your area. But the thing is, mean? for the hotel industry, the only place in the Philippines that can survive on quote unquote domestic travel is Luzon. Besides, we're oh. not going to survive off domestic. Our islands are all separated. We don't have enough people Spread in our out. key areas to kind of pay for it. We yeah. have to have international travelers. And international <laughs> travel is the most complicated thing because you need countries to agree with each other to fly in. Because some might say, Oh, we're lying, but the plane has to be half filled. And there are some things like, oh, it has to be one third filled. Some say, oh, it can be completely filled. And if you're in the yeah, airline the industry, you have to figure out, like, am I making money off this? So it's that situation uh, where no one's going to have the same sort of rules. No one's got the same applications. But as so airlines, you have to figure it out and still somehow make money. Does that mean the tickets might be more expensive? Yeah, it, it could be yeah. the case. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Probably going to so be the only thing that's really, <laughs> like, yep. yeah. The only thing that's really clear right now is for the travel to work, the best place to really put all the things in place is the airports and your forms. Like the idea is, if your government says or somehow feels that it's safe for you to travel, I guess your form should be clear. Then go to the airport as the final check as a bottleneck to where you go. Because like just saying, oh, you know, the plane should be half filled for social distancing. I'm going to look this. You're in a contained space. <laughs> the social distancing oh means yes. nothing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If the it's whole, like, losing the middle field, seat. What, what's the point? <laughs> right, so the like, point. what is that supposed to do? Does, does everyone have to clean the latrine every single time you go there? How's the food work? The stewardess? There's so many things here that you're going to contact each other again. So if you need to fix, it has to be the airport. Honestly, going with the whole COVID case and everything, the pandemic, 
Uh, everyone's saying we need to wait for a vaccine, cure, blah, blah, blah. Honestly, I feel things would normalize if you have a treatment that technically works at home. Because yep. right now, the biggest issue is all treatments have to be done in the hospital. But if you can do a home treatment, suddenly it becomes less of an issue. And it's all like supportive care. That's, th- that's still the issue. We don't have um, anything that actually directly attacks COVID as far as I know. Um, but, sorry, no, it's it more COVID-19. Of, will... It's all supportive care. Yep. We'll... You know, have people on ventilators it's, and stuff. Yep, it'll just help you survive. And the thing is, I've I've known people who've had COVID, who've survived it. And it's so weird. Some people get it's horrible cases. And other guys, they come and go like, I literally had a worse flu three months ago from something else. Yeah. The only thing I learned, though, that seems to be normal from everyone is apparently if you get COVID, you get really, really thirsty. Huh. Thirst. Uh, that's like, a thing that no one talks about. Apparently, or... it's really thirsty. Yeah, liquid. Like uh, one of the guys I know, he <laughs> was drinking thirsty, about like... eight liters. Thirsty. It's like thirsty eight liters or... of water per day. Thirsty. <laughs> because well, do... a lot of people are thirsty on the internet. Yes, we understand that. It is hey, man, COVID. It has been a while for some people. <laughs> it's lonely times, man. It's lonely times. My exactly. VR has been keeping me sane. Yeah, I have some new VR apps. Games. One By hand the way, more fit than the other. <laughs> this is this is something but that yeah. I should be asking Norm, right? Because Norm <laughs> traditionally is the dude that whenever it's like the Steam Summer what? Sale or the Christmas Sale, is oh yeah, is the dude that's like, all right, man, I'm gonna buy like twenty games. Yeah, I'm gonna play like one of them. Did, I'll, did I'll find I'll now? find time to play the other thing. Yeah. I've got like forty games on my wish list. While they are on sale, I can't put it on my conscience to buy any of them because I don't have the time to play them. Okay. Okay. <laughs> City Skylines, uh, dude. City I, Skylines is like a uh, like really deep sale right Baldur's now. Gate 3, yeah, like Baldur's Gate 3, dude. Baldur's Gate. Like 250 brother, or 300 pesos I want to take Baldur's <laughs> yeah. Gate 2. For, for the deluxe like, edition, dude. The I'm City like Skylines. on Retro Mania Wrestling <laughs> maybe, because it's maybe. out in July. Okay. Maybe there's going to so be like, like a pandemic mod for City Skylines and you're going to have to... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like how it'll be a Plague Inc. City Skylines like crossover, crossover game. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be the most ambitious crossover period. But, Adventures has nothing on it. But yeah, it's kind of funny because this episode's gonna drop this coming Saturday or in seven to six days. But I <laughs> talked about the same thing, the Steam sale with my friend, and it's dropping like end of July because we July have 10. a lot of recording stacked up. So uh, July Steam, 10 is the end of sale. Yeah so, yeah, so July 10 is ending the sale. I doubt I'll buy anything. I'm just stacking up my money, saving it up for Retro Mania Wrestling and then P4 Golden and then maybe Baldur's Gate 2 because I like Minsk and Boo. Ooh. I have so many games I have purchased that I'm probably never going to play. What you know, I you feel think? bad about something, Miko, because you gave us a free game, Sniper Elite. I have yet to re- oh, download it here. <laughs> Remember that time you gave us that code? Yeah, probably. Uh, dude, I have 230 games in my library. I That's have nice. probably played... <laughs> I only actively play five of them. Okay. <laughs> I literally have games I have never, <laughs> ever played. <laughs> it's just in my library. It has never been open, never been installed. I wanted to play Paper, Please for the longest time, but I might go crazy playing it now in the context where I'm... <laughs> Why? What's happening in your context <laughs> right now? Your border control? That's all you're doing? <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like the, uh, it's like a simulator for my city. Well, your papers. Where is your bond paper size pass? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Let's not, oh, let, let's, let's not let's go let's there, dude. <laughs> but yeah steam sale oh god um this is my first steam sale uh i'm not touching my money because i'm saving it up again for a wrestling game and for a persona game speaking of p4 golden the voice actress there of rise recently was also from the last of us 2 miko we talked about this way before recording like Mm. this lady has almost two decades worth of work in the video game industry and yet now because he's like playing the hot up chick in last of us 2 he's getting death threats like i don't know where like you're used to not getting that and now you're getting it it's like what the it's not like the talent's fault of a game or 
story, right? All right, yeah. all right. I mean, some, again, some, uh, I can see... Can I request some context here? Because I haven't played Last of Us oh. 2, and I don't have uh, a PS4. Basically, um, <laughs> there's a seasoned veteran who's voiceovering a very controversial character. So imagine she voiced over Jar Jar, and now she's getting death threats. All right. Yeah, pretty much that. Again... It's those situations where, look, there's lots of games I played where I heavily dislike characters, heavily dislike story choices. I have zero issues with the VAs or Jenny, the people who put it together, because it's not their story. This is a job they're fulfilling. Exactly. So, so the like, death threat, sadly, it's a sad norm for the last three to five years. Uh, I do not like how social media has somehow allowed such a things to happen where people say it's okay if you're quote unquote correct about what you're doing which no 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 you don't threaten people I don't care yep. whether you just don't threaten people <laughs> you're not supposed to do that. only get this, this kind of behavior from 4chan yeah now and now Twitter. Suddenly, suddenly oh man Twitter's on, like no, it's becoming been on like, Twitter <laughs> the thing is 4chan you kind of accept what they do as like we know this is going to happen here we don't like it but we know it's going to Twitter's just become like I mean, a long time ago, Twitter was still a confusing place that we didn't know why it's still alive, and now it's also still wondering why it's still alive. <laughs> yeah. I do remember Blair. The woke and the uh, anti-woke are all there. They're, like, well, they're killing themselves each other. Well, I mean, it's also not the fault of the people going there. It's also because Twitter has very Same. weird policies when it comes to how to remove people or remove certain content. It's kind of like, if you remove these people, yeah, you're going to end up with these people. Kind of like what happens with some Reddits. Where if you completely remove one side uh-huh. of the aisle, yeah, you're going to only get this. And you're wondering, oh my god, why are we so biased to this? Uh, because you removed the other voice. Yeah. Yep. So, and something when that, it comes um, to people sick. Hmm? Something that Mark Zuckerberg recently said. Something about how um, social media ought not to be the arbiter of truth. Um, and in, I 100% you know, agree to that. Right? And it, sort of in response uh, to uh, sort of in response to that, um, what's it What's it called? The, the, the boycott. In, in response to that boycott. Um, yeah, because I think, oh, because you're not doing hate speech and blah, 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 and other things. You should be censored. Yeah. I look at, look, uh, you can't have these people be the arbiter of truth. Because what? Who's going to be checking it? I'm not going to trust this private company to say this is what's allowed, this is not allowed. And at the same time, if Facebook goes that through, they become a publisher, not a platform. And as a yeah. publisher, uh-huh. I feel like you have a lot more other landmines that you can step on versus a platform. Yeah, there, there, there are very there. few things that you can agree that sims have to be removed. Like if it's call to actions which are violent and other things, yeah, you should probably remove that if it's an illegal act. But I'm, I'm but not if sure. If it's something if that's... that is just opinion that's bad, like I mean, who's to say it's bad or good? The, um, talking about Facebook specifically, though, I'm not even I'm not even against the idea of um, well, I, I guess social media in general. Um, I'm, I'm not against the idea of them not taking down a violent call to action. Okay, because that shouldn't be what they do. They should be getting rid of bots. Okay, yeah, exactly. I'll agree to that. The bot accounts, spam right? Bots. They should be getting rid of spam bots and like inauthentic behavior. Um, if that's like the proper term for it, but like if it's somebody that's legitimately making a violent call to action, I mean, shit, that's the American okay. Revolution. That's the yeah, Philippine Revolution. I, uh, I think. I think. I actually. I was a part of a conversation <laughs> about that. That's probably the most interesting, conflicting conversation I've ever been part of. Which is, yeah, at what point do you say no more and you have to take more aggressive action right, because so, I mean I when we see everything in hindsight certain revolutions we had in the past yeah we'll see yeah not, we should they should have done that but in the time you're in it's really hard to tell if it's the right way or the wrong way because as people say we're never the bad guy in our own story and the and, and the question is um, is should Facebook be the thing that or, or the entity that decides whether or not we push it further i mean you know oh that one's yeah. that one's good because it is it is pretty much the town it's a town square now it is it's a private entity sure but it is the public it's a place of public opinion now yeah uh, similar yeah. to twitter where even though it is a private establishment and i do agree lots of private businesses should have certain rights to them at this point it's such a massively used thing that like i don't know how this works right because you're such a massive entity which has so much hold on political opinions and other things where you could essentially affect elections small or big or make even major effects to companies like uh if we simp if facebook says you know goes to one of the big 
fast food companies tell us them, you are never allowed to uh, have ads in our, con- in our platform ever again. That's yeah. going to hurt that company. Yeah, so it's like, like... Not, they could say like, oh, I just another place. Sure, go there. No one's going to go there. It's like the same way, you know, Yahoo exists. Sure, but, you know, whoever says I'm going to Yahoo it. Yeah, I mean, like, um, uh, you know, I, I suppose, like, um, I suppose Facebook as, well, Facebook, Twitter, you know, Reddit, whatever, like, uh, they're all within their rights as private companies to be able to do whatever they want to do on their platform. If they want to, you know, re- completely remove one side of the aisle, then fine, they can do that because it's a privately owned company and isn't officially imbued with public interest. But, um, but, now, now that the social media platforms are becoming more and more "quote unquote" public spaces, um, it ought not to be the case, right? Because yeah, uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> because because that isn't the job of Facebook or Twitter. I mean, it should be the job of a more, I suppose, competent authority. Uh, free speech. I will agree that I'm probably not a free speech absolutist, but I tend to always lean to no censorship whatsoever. Simply being, I like having people be able to say whatever they want simply because I know what you're about and I know if you're actually a person I'd like to associate with or not. Because the second we censor you or make you say quiet, quote unquote, the opinion doesn't disappear. It doesn't go away. You just find a different place to talk. Yeah, it's, it's sort yeah. of like... Um, this, it might get worse. It's, it's sort of like, uh, what's the name of that hotel chain in Japan? Um, the Appa Hotel chain, right? Like the dude, the dude that owns it is one of those is the Japanese equivalent of a Holocaust denier, and um, yep. if you go to well, it's it's not the case anymore, but back in the day when you would go into their hotels, you'd be um, you'd be confronted with a lot of literature talking about things denying the existence of comfort women and um, denying the existence of the the rape of Nanking. And, like, mm-hmm. you would find this in books and magazines that you would find in place of what would otherwise have been a Bible or a Quran in another, um, in another hotel. And they fairly recently, I think, or at least relative to the length of time that that hotel chain has been around, um, removed all of this literature or removed all of these books that were sort of questionable. And that sort of obscures the dangerous ideas that this person holds. And if you are staying at the Appa Hotel, it, it, it'd it be good to know that the money that you're paying to them is funding the political career of a person that denies the existence of comfort women. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Again, that's why I don't believe in censorship. Is I want if you're going to talk about, I want to know what you're about. It doesn't mean I'm going to agree with you. It doesn't mean I'm not going to agree with you. But if I make you stay quiet or censor you, it just becomes ah, uh, I don't know if I want to support or associate because you're not giving me a choice here. Yeah. And again, it's I guess a nice analogy to like censoring people, and it just gets worse. It's like when you put a person to jail that is like a let's say. In, a small, a minor crime, like in, before it was like a marijuana crimes. If you put this person <laughs> oh, in jail, oh, it oh, may get worse simply because. <laughs> no, no. Let's let's say like small crime. You go into this, you end up with in the accompaniment of people who might be more hard than criminals. So you yeah, could you graduate leave the jail to like math. worse. So it's kind of like you came here with such a small thing that honestly, if it was just left alone, like you just got fined or something, you'd be fine. But now you're surrounded by people who are far worse, and you're now in that company, and you learn, hey, I'd rather do this now. It's yeah, kind of dude. simple thing with censorship. If you try to make it, quote, quote, go away, you're just going to end up pushing them to a place that they feel they can talk, and they might start hearing things that just might make things worse. Yeah. It could get better, New but ideas. it could get worse. It's like out of sight, out of mind. That's not how it works. Just because I like remove someone from Twitter, it's like, oh, they're finally gone. The opinion's gone. No, no, it just goes somewhere else. And if people don't see what's going on, it might get worse, or you know, it might get better, and people don't see the improvement. Yeah, I've always been the idea that you know information should be generally available. There's some information I will agree that maybe shouldn't be available. Something like a uh, like I think there's an old discussion I had before. Uh, where they're saying that someone's saying like inf- all information should be available, which State I secrets. sort of disagreed with, simply because mm. there's something trade secrets should be kept secret because that's the nature of the, of the work, 
and the other part is yep. to say assembly of certain devices or things of warlike nature. Yeah, I'd rather not have people know all those things. And that's why I'm not a big a fan of, of the anarchists information <laughs> that's like confidential, <laughs> secret and top secret because if it gets divulged into public it will harm a nation's capacity. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's why there are certain things that are kept under those pieces of paper. And like yep. it, At the it's same um, time. it's it's what gives like people that are in th- that do the whole espionage thing like Martin here a job. Yep. <laughs> You're taking so my job. <laughs> there was something that falls into the wrong hands that was top secret. Well, maybe in a few days our country is screwed. That's yeah. why the freedom of information law is there. Yes. But there's only certain information you can access yep. because of it's national of security. And, yep, and that's a legit concern. That's a legit thing. And, and you'll say, no, I have a right to this information. Okay. So what are you going to do when you find out this information and it ruins your life and it makes you freaking paranoid? It's, it's, again, it's no, it's, it, it depends on the no, It depends on who's in power. Right? It depends on who's in it's power. If you like really the president. An example. Then, then, I, 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 I'm talking you. about... No, Jao, Jao. I, I, I'm talking about... You, if, I'm talking if about... If about aliens are real, what's going to happen next? Yeah, but... Like, send the best here, here's, here's what I mean, man. Here's what I mean. I'm pretty okay. sure that Everybody that's on the internet right now, or all of your like legit sort of Facebook people that that are all like, yep, that are all like, oh, I was the tete. I'm pretty sure that if they would use the Freedom of Information Act, they would find a way to take down the president, which you probably exactly. shouldn't do. But but if a president that they liked was sitting in power, it wouldn't be something that they would think is like good. <laughs> Right? Yeah, I, I see that's that in the, my feed. Like, that's always the problem with people, man. Always the problem. This, oh, this, okay, this freedom of information. Oh, this, who this. Do you have there? <laughs> this anti-terror terror bill is is terrible because it's this president. But if it were like a president that they liked, they might not be as sort of apprehensive. You know, I think that's that, that's oh, why funny. we got the fucking cybercrime law yeah. passed because people like the president that signed it into law. No, we didn't. We didn't like that president either, but it got signed into law, and now it's biting the ass of his like media outlet or media pet. He only decried about it when his friends got hit. And now. that's why, when it comes to any laws or protocols, I like in the way that when it goes there, you have to understand it'll affect everyone. That's why I like laws that you have to. Yep. We build this in a way that it's equal. Yes. You get affected. Guess what? I get affected. If you're going to say that. It's great because this person, that's probably a bad set, that's a, probably a bad law or procedure then. If it only works for just yeah. X persons in power, that makes no sense. No, which no, is the same way they say, and, oh. Yeah. Hmm? yeah. I mean, which, Basically, which is you why know the, what happens in the end? You know who wins? You know who still wins in the both scenarios and both admin? The no, no. That certain <laughs> senator that was made fun of back in 2012 and 2013 who was pushing for the uh, libel portion of the cybercrime law and who's still in power now and who also approved an anti-terror terror law. Oh, man. Uh, Same guy. Thing. Still sitting pretty there right now. Yeah. <laughs> he wins. Not the current president, not the past president. Just him. You know... This this is uh, no, huh? this is this, this is exactly the it? genesis of my you know, of of my uh, my position that any sort of policy has to be looked at or, or any sort of policy should be subject to the test of what if the person in power hates me, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> right. So so like if exactly. you know when when um whenever like a student uh might ask me about sir what do you think of this what do you think of you know what do you think of the cybercrime law etc it would be it would be looked through that lens right what if the person in power hated me would i be comfortable with this what if the government that was in power wanted to take me down personally would i be good with this policy in place mm-hmm. in the case of parts of that um in the case of parts of that cybercrime law, yeah, a lot of the stuff there I didn't like. In the case of this anti-terror terror bill, yeah, a lot of that stuff I oh, don't like. Oh, lots of things are bad. 
<laughs> you know, mainly because the wording is so overly vague, and I have to trust a group of people who honestly I feel like probably don't understand how to apply it. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, a lot of it. The problem with a lot of laws is that in theory they're you know they're they're good, right? But like. Yeah. You know, like, like like in theory, once somebody is done with their sentence, they're out of prison. But how many people are in prison right now that haven't been released, right? Yeah, like how many people are being held that have not seen their court date yet, right? And like you know, some, somebody is I don't know, somebody is arrested for uh, arrested and charged for theft, right? And they're in a detention center. And because they haven't gone to court yet, they've served the entirety of what would have been the sentence for theft. You know. Yep. What is that like? Uh, when it comes to like uh, uh, the issues with the laws and everything, how they're set up, it's that like uh, you have to assume that this will be for different people. Like, if the person charged doesn't like you, as Zhao said, will it be something good? Will it be something bad? But people don't really think that far. They just see the now and think, oh, this works now and I like it. And the future will always be the same. Like, no, no, no. There are lots of things that if you set precedent for this, it's going to get bad. Like, yeah. there's some cases that, how come certain, like, bad guys get away? Because if you did this way, it's going to be used against a good person somehow. Yeah, it's... it's uh... And people don't realize with argumentation, that's how it works. Like, uh, like there's certain movements that I see, like, I don't agree with how you're doing it. Why? Because if you do it that way and people accept it that way, I see how people are going to abuse that same system to get their thing. But right. people don't see it that way. They'd say, oh, this will get me my outcome. True, but how will people misuse that same process? Exactly. Can I just say... There's always room for abuse. Yeah. Can, can I just say that I'm so, like, proud of my little brother? Because I'm looking through his Steam library and I'm like, oh, oh. nice. He's actually he, played stuff? <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my brother has logged 26 hours on FTL. Oh, cool. Ooh. My brother has logged... I have that game. Never played it, but I have that game. And my brother has nice logged game. 60 hours on Civ Five. Just 60? He played one game? <laughs> he's um He's been playing a lot of Portal. He's been playing Worms <laughs> Reloaded. Counters, uh, oh, yeah. Go. It's on sale right now, the whole yeah. bunch. He's been playing a lot of Tabletop Simulator. <laughs> oh, that thing's Ooh, fun, especially no. now in the, in the pandemic. It's a great way to play tabletop games with your friends. Um, he's been playing... Huh. Oh, dude, he has Is like... Is that the game? <laughs> he, he, he has all of the DLC Wait. for Civ Six. Like, oh, nice. <laughs> wow. Ask him to gift it to you. Okay. Ask him to gift it to you. <laughs> uh, Civ Six is a game I tried so hard to like. I cannot <laughs> like Civ Six. It's not a fault to the game, in fairness. It's Civ Five. I felt, was such a well-done game that Civ Six did not meet expectation. <laughs> Oh, he has all of the DLC for Civ Five as well. Oh, Civ Five is amazing. And first, Civ Five is what? That's bra- it's Brave New World, pretty much. That's yeah. the main thing you need. And it, everything else, like, yeah, sure, you could. But for Civ Six, has so much like content available. But it's a game that if you started with Civ Six, you'd probably enjoy it. But if you came from Civ Four, then played Civ Five, then go to Civ Six, you think Civ Six is two steps back. It did lots of weird things to essentially make the game, I guess, more casual. But when you're okay. looking at this type of game type, it's not for casual people anymore. It's for really the people who really want the, uh, uh, what's it called? 4X game, explore, exterminate, and something. I'm forgetting oh, wow. the terminology right now for it. But yeah, Civ 6 as a game, if you start with Civ 6, it's a great game. If you played Civ 5, you'll be so disappointed with Civ 6. Which and Civ, Civ were Six you has... playing on stream before, Miko? I remember uh, Civ Five. Playing one. Uh, Civ Five. Enjoyed a lot. Uh, uh, yeah. Civ Five just... And I guess I play it in a way that most people don't, which is I make sure each game lasts around like 50, 60 hours because I play in Marathon, okay. Longest, and I start in the Ancient Era and work my way up. I will oh, man, literally spend I'm... like yeah. two, three days easily <laughs> <laughs> to finish one For campaign. One game. <laughs> that video, you just and, re- like, You were on the woods. You were trying to take over some some camp outside of those trees, but you were always stuck there because when oh, you yeah. charge, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That must have been such a struggle for you. It's a a fantastic game. I still play it until today. The mod thing could be also really good for it. For Civ 6, I guess also another bad part was there's so many exploits in the game. Like, oh my god, there's so many exploits in the game that just breaks the whole thing. I'm just utterly shocked to how you can actually just get so many exploits that work on multiplayer. Uh, Like, there is an exploit that you essentially get infinite production, which means you can pretty much make anything you want 
instantaneously in the next turn. The way it's set up just does not make sense. It makes Even dollars. the AI is being problematic. Sorry. Yeah. If I can jump Speaking in, are you, have you ever yep. played the Might and Magic series? Yes. Oh, 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 we're going all. Oh, 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 because we're talking about strategy <laughs> games, and I'm, I've never been a Civ player, but I have played Might Heroes and Magic. Heroes of Might and Magic. Heroes of Might and Magic. Is that in your high school days? Oh, 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 <laughs> Oh, I mean, I have to say, uh, Norm, that's like saying that it's like us and we were talking about WoW and you want to. Like, I have also played EverQuest. Or Ultima oh my Online. god, I, I saw EverQuest before. Uh, remember when we had Sky Cable and it had like this Australian channel that talks about video games, and after their show, they do playthroughs of EverQuest. I think like I remember that one. I think that's one. Is that, right? that also had the Doom thing or Quake in it? Yes, it had the I Quake thing as well. Quake Tree Tournament as well, yeah. Man. Oh my god. I remember that. Now we just call oh them Let's god. Play channels. Yep. <laughs> There's a lot of them now. Don't need that TV show anymore. And also, Might, I think uh, Might and Magic and everything is actually available on Steam right now on sale as well. Yeah, same. Like, like Baldur's Gate, but like I said, I'm like, I can't. Uh, the wrestling fan in me says, I gotta check my money, save it before <laughs> I know the price of the wrestling game. Oh, uh, don't talk about yeah. retro stuff. I recently got the uh, Red Alert remastered. Oh, how is it, dude? Oh, yeah, yeah, I, wanted yeah, to, I wanted to. Oh ask my you god, about that. It, is a, it is a throwback to the olden days, and oh my god, the game was utterly garbage in terms of like <laughs> how you control it. <laughs> when but you press fairness, space bar, it becomes like HD. <laughs> Oh yeah, right. but the thing is, like, uh, like to move your mouth, to move the characters. Like, usually, right now, you think right click, right? Select yeah. and right click. Yeah. No, right. no, it's left click. Uh, oh. And if you played Tiberia, if you played the original Tiberium Wars, you cannot team your people. Oh, you can't oh, set teams. Really? You can't set locations. You can't move around the map with arrow keys. You can't save areas. The AI is absolutely stupid. But the thing is, it really was how it was before. For Red Alert 2, yeah. for the Red Alert Remaster, though, you can actually take off, like, you can start making it more modern. You can change, like, do you want classic or modern way of playing it? So you can actually tune it up to be exactly like it was before or how more games are actually played today. Like, in fairness to Westwood, when they first made this game, I don't even think the RTS genre was really that big a thing when it came out. I mean, uh, like, the RTS games then was, uh, was Siberian Sun, Red Alert, uh, Warcraft, Warcraft 1, which was... Oh my god, Warcraft 1. When I played it, this no wonder Warcraft 2 was great. Because Warcraft 1 was just, <laughs> what is going on? What is this horrible thing? Man, I remember uh, playing I, Warcraft on the PlayStation. And it sucked. Oh my god. Oh, that's, 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 that's so RTS sad, on dude. Consoles. Oh man. <laughs> I was like, why no, is don't... there no mouse here? It makes no sense. It's Everything takes so long to do. Uh, and then the AI is just feels, like, I am going like... to destroy you because I don't have those limitations you have, human. Yeah. <laughs> I am the AI. I can control myself without a controller. <laughs> and actually, the best part is there is a huge modding community for the Red Alert Remastered. And pretty much the quote-unquote mods is just people using the map editor to make maps. But they're actual, actual mods that make the AI work better, make the layouts more normal to a modern game it's a game that I'll say that if you grew up with Red Alert it's a great throwback to the olden days if you've never played Red Alert yeah, you're in for some um, <laughs> difficulties <laughs> I really do not remember any of the controls of Red Alert <laughs> oh well, if you've played before and you play this you'll just remember why was this good <laughs> why did this make sense oh man this is horrible <laughs> No, but the best part is they have the original, like, freaking, like, movie scenes between the missions. Okay. They just did their best to upscale that stuff. <laughs> it's not great. But it's, like, square scenes, horrible acting. Just look like, man, things were weird back then. <laughs> really, really, really weird. But it's true to, it's true to what it was. If you, it does bring back memories. The music was remastered, which I think was a fantastic touch. Okay. But yeah, if you played the game before, it's worth it. And but there is something I'm annoyed. There is no ant mission, which kind of annoyed me. They don't have the, uh, the they don't have the expansion pack. Which wow, it's been a while since I said expansion pack because back then <laughs> it was the DLC uh, for yep. Counter Strike, which was the expansion pack for Red Alert. 
which gave you more which gave you more missions and a secret uh secret ant levels which was I think uh eight missions where you fought giant ants. You know back then what, what? we before the time of yeah. expansion packs we only had sequels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If your game came out yes. bad, that was it. Ain't fixing that. <laughs> you gotta work on it That's on the next all, one. Folks. <laughs> it's it's but, how I imagine like the evolution of CD Projekt Red technology from game to game. That there are no expansion packs; they're just sequels, and they evolve every time. I mean, but, Witcher's the way, expa- uh, expansion pack was great. Wait, wait, did you guys have Call of Duty Four on Steam? Yes. Uh, no. no. Wait, re- original or remaster? Original, original. Yes, yes, I do. We should we we should play the we, we should play. Like, oh yeah, we all, can't do that, huh? Can we? <laughs> right? Like, even if you know. uh, my PC specs suck. Uh, the game know. was released in 2007, bro. 2000... <laughs> Is it 2007? I feel it's earlier. I hope I can. But... If you have a game with four games of RAM, it's... Martin, I need to check and play it. Yes. Wait, let's let, let, let's I check. Let, let's see what the let's see what the minimum, this, requirements, uh, are. The minimum requirements are for Call of oh, Duty. Okay, it's 2007. Okay, I felt it was earlier than 2007. Well, we graduated in 2009, so... All right. System requirements. Okay, you need a 2.4 gigahertz uh, processor. You need 1 gig of RAM. Oh, my God. 2 gig if you're a no Vista. <laughs> uh, video card. I don't even know what this is. 3.0 shader support. Direct X9. Just... Yeah. If you have a video card that has 1 Sound gig of card. RAM... Yes. Yeah, you're good. Wow, it's actually 8 gigs? That's a massive game. Yeah. Huh. Huh. Never realized how big that is. Oh, uh, the, but the RAM, you need at least 128 MB of VRAM. That's your video card. <laughs> yeah. Dude, dude. The the minimum requirement for graphics cards, at least as, as, as shown on uh, the Steam page, is an NVIDIA GeForce 6600. Man, I've not heard that in a while. <laughs> I feel like I can run this on my phone. <laughs> Called mobile. Well, I am pretty have, sure I can have run this on my app. phone. <laughs> they do have a mobile Actually, app. Actually, there's my friends are playing Cod Mobile. Uh, like last Friday to Saturday morning, I was joining them on a Google Meet. They're all like, "Okay, guys, we're on a team game now." Wait, what are you guys playing? Oh, Cod Mobile. Oh, nice. One join? Well, uh, no, I'm at work. I was just saying hi, and it's my lunch break. Okay. <laughs> uh, Cod Mobile. In fairness to Cod Mobile, it's a pretty decent game for what it is. It really tries okay. to sell you too much stuff. But the funniest <laughs> yeah. thing is the best way to play Cod Mobile is on the PC. But it's on mobile. <laughs> yeah, you can play it on the PC as well. Uh, do not do that. Your account will get banned. But yeah, yeah, there are literally people who play this on a PC, and it's so easy to tell who's the PC gamer and who's on the mobile. <laughs> because they if can you actually see anyone. Aim. <laughs> oh, not just aim. You're getting like kills upon kills. Like I saw some games that you see MVP. How many kills he got? Yeah, sixty-two kills. What's the second place guy got? Seven. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's like might be might be a PC user, and of course the easiest oh. way is how are they looking around? Can they make circles? Can they look up and down? Yeah, it's probably a PC user. Or, of course, there's some who do use mobile, however, have the peripherals to attach a keyboard and mouse yes. to their phones. And some which do I that saw this, just to. Which I've seen that, like, the time. quote unquote gaming uh, mobile setups, yeah. which is like a. It's the, it's the uh, phone that attaches to a mirrored screen while having a keyboard and a mouse. So it's pretty much. Your phone's just a CPU. Okay. I'm just really like, man, you really, really want to crush lobbies. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> That's all I see. Like, this is to crush a lobby. This is because you're enjoying the game. This is like, I want to make sure the game is only fun to me and no one else. Mm. I won't call it hacking because it's technically not. You're just getting, quote, unquote, better equipment. But it's just like, why? To what end are you doing this? <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, I play Call of Duty on the PC. I do crossplay, so I got consoles. I am a little annoyed to how the aim assist for console is a little overpowered. Yeah, it's a smidgen overpowered. Like it's like a semi-auto aim already. Put it this way: as long as your cursor is near my head, you will get a headshot. <laughs> what? Which, like, I do not like this. Like, I have lost games against entire console teams because they are very, very accurate. I'm like, I know you guys aren't hacking because hacks don't really exist much for consoles, and they're 
the ones that do are just very difficult to use. It's like your auto, your aim assist is a little too strong. The only thing good about the auto, the aim assist is it has some issues if you're hiding behind cover. But beyond that, it's it feels a little unfair sometimes. But of course, I could just quote unquote even the playing field by using my controller on PC, which sounds like a really weird thing to do. But I know people have done that. They say it works better. I think they're lying, but you know, each their own. Yeah. yeah. So much of the so much of my games right now I'm playing are either remasters, retros, or things of the past. <laughs> But you, you, Wait, you know that I, I I play I play games on GOG a lot more than I do on Steam. Ah, uh, GOG, yeah. Wait, what's GOG again? GOG, games. GOG, good old games, man. Yep. Uh, is it like? Uh, it's like Steam CD for Project old games. Red Steam. <laughs> oh my god! It's Steam from Poland. <laughs> Poland Steam. <laughs> I mean, like they, they do have like a lot of like modern games and stuff, but. They made their name on games like Prince of Persia and stuff, so, like... And we mean the old Prince of Persia, not that new one with 3D. Oh, yeah, the... And Sans. (laughs) No, the old game which kicked your ass like two, three frames in. I really really love playing that game, dude. It's a fun game. I I never finished it as a kid, but it was an interesting game. Oh, my God. And you know, your old computer might actually run it. Yes, actually, I, I can see it's Warcraft 1 and 2 bundle. There's Norm, yeah. get this, there's Heroes of Might and Magic 3. <laughs> and it's on sale, right? It's on sale. It's on sale. And I can afford it because it's only five AIs. So if <laughs> there we a, go. I think, I think Martin is a good. card I have here. <laughs> what Martin's what number is the latest the Heroes of, of Might and Magic? I, think I have no idea, sick. but it's... Heroes of Might and Magic, Norm. <laughs> oh my god. This is so cool. Okay, yeah, so I'm, I'm Steam. seeing Heroes of Might and Magic 7. I don't know if that's the latest one, but it does go up to 7. So it's like Final Fantasy, but half No, no, no. Seven, it, it went further than Final Fantasy. It, Final Fantasy went further than it. Also, again, yeah. like retro games, remasters, <laughs> yes. Current game I am playing, Final Fantasy VII Remake, because I am now going to yeah. slowly work on 100%ing it, though that's a game I want to and don't want to 100%. Why but not? You know what we'll never get in the near future unless a company gets its together? Half-Life 3.